Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. Wait. Well, go on, you know, Madel. I want y'all to stop what y'all doing right now. Go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat. Facebook, YouTube, you name it, we're on it. Anywhere you can type Boss Talk Podcast 101 and it streams, we're there. But if you want to see our full-length interviews, see our visuals, go to our YouTube, sign up for our membership package, you get exclusive content that nobody else sees. So thank me later. Man, hey, man, listen, man, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, like she said. But listen, we got a very, very special guest in the mm-hmm. day, y'all. She don't need no introduction. Man, this young lady right here, I got some calls from the right people about this one. <laughs> so I feel pretty good about this, man. Jules in the building. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Well, we all right. I mean, you yeah, know what I'm saying? You done got, I'm doing well, all you guys. Yes. You know, real low key, like, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> very soft spoken. Soft spoken, <laughs> man. It's going down, though, man, from the music. I've been listening to though you, you got a voice man so I mean we're gonna get all the way into that but I always like to let Mr. Jamaica go yes, first yes cause I he's the music guy I'm more of the history person I mm-hmm. wanna know who you are as a person because when fans love you they don't just love you for the music they fall more in love with you because of the things you've been through where you're from all of that sort of stuff mm-hmm. so were you born and raised in North Carolina yes okay what part Charlotte Charlotte Okay, everybody knows Charlotte. It's a popular town. Mm -hmm. What was it like growing up in Charlotte? Um, Yeah, it's chill. It's kind of different. I feel like uh, there's a lot of different vibes out there, but for the most part, I feel like it's the South. Mm. So it's just regular. It's a me. (laughs) Okay. But I mean, I'm from there, so. Because, you know, we talk to a lot of people from California. They talk about, well, the violence, the gangs, the this, the Mm -hmm. that. So I just didn't know if North Carolina had anything like that. I mean, of course, like everybody has that. I wasn't necessarily too much a part of any of that. that. Um, like my mom's a pastor. Mm. Yeah, that says it all right there. <laughs> well, sure. it just that, that right there made the show go a different way for me. No. The pastor's <laughs> child is in here. You know, we're gonna have to really be careful. We're gonna take a communion and everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> everything is going down this episode. I never did a communion on here, but we're gonna do all that today, y'all. So get ready for it, cause the pastor's daughter is here. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I grew up in a church, and mm-hmm. they say they used, they usually say the pastor kids are usually the worst. Everybody oh, says that. Is that true? Being the past, let's hear your side of the story. Being a pastor child, what was it like growing up in a household? You know, was it strict? Like you wanted to do a whole bunch of stuff that all your all the friends was doing, and you couldn't get to do it. How was that? There was definitely some of that. My mom's pretty cool though. Um, but it's definitely, you know, she's questioning everything. Mm. Every movie. I definitely didn't do everything that everybody did. But for the most part, my mom wanted us to, like, have fun. You know, she grew up in, like, Detroit. So she, like, had fun ah. growing up. Oh, know? we know what kind of pastor's wife that is. Detroit, that's why they be playing that BMF and stuff at, ain't it? <laughs> Y'all, uh, yeah, I've been up there. I drove from Detroit to Chicago one day. I see I see what's with You been up there? Yeah. Man, I think, who, who that what big part of Detroit? all of them. Do you know? Yeah, she just <laughs> she, up there. She's like, yeah, I'm, I'm Charlotte. <laughs> but yeah, but my mom is Liberian. Oh. Uh, yeah, she was born in Liberia. But she, That's, How old was she when she came here? Uh, I think five or four or five. Oh, so she don't remember a she lot. She does, actually. I don't know. I think different. I feel like the dramatics of living there and like in a village, you're going to remember. Like, you probably remember right. have memories of that because it's just so different than where you're at now. Has she went back to visit since she's grown? I don't think so. I mm. think she's like kind of cool. I, mm. Yeah. I know, you know a lot of those vibes, places you know? have like a lot of, you know, yeah. bad stuff that yeah, goes no, on. Yeah, no, it's not too much like, you know, the glitz and glam Africa right. that you see on the internet. Right. But, you know, but to me, like, my, like I'm from Jamaica, mm-hmm. right? And like my kids, they went when they were young, but they were too young to remember. So this mm-hmm. year, they actually went to to see, and they, they fell in love with the country. Well, they, they were getting it. drunk. Let's be real no. about it. They were sneaking around <laughs> drinking drink on that resort. Eighteen and up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they over there, over there getting drunk and coming back trying to challenge my authority over in Jamaica. You know what I'm no, saying? No, but other than yeah. that, and that was only one child. That wasn't two. Be clear about that. But um, but they love the scenery. They love the people. All of that. But saying that is. 
they get a chance to know the heritage, where For they're sure. from, where their parents are mm -hmm. from, stuff like that, where their mom is from, not parents, because he's from here. Mm -hmm. But stuff like that, I think, is very important. It instead is of just, important. I'm definitely you know, going to visit. That's what I was trying oh, yeah, to see. yeah, no, for sure. I'm definitely going to visit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, here we go. You know, y'all always, y'all, you foreigners is different. You know, y'all come on this show. Miss Jamaica, she going to talk about how, you know, we got to go to Jamaica. That's cool, but ain't nothing like the great state of Texas. <laughs> Texas is cool. Comparing America to uh, Texas. Yeah. Texas. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, how is it up here? You got to tell me how it is up there. I hadn't been. That's one place that I supposed to went. I supposed to went to South Carolina, but you're in North Carolina. You got Rocky Mountain and all that so stuff. They don't have no there. beaches? Um, is, that, is that in North Carolina? Or is it South Carolina? I think it's more heavily South Carolina. I think there is a beach in North Carolina. I don't. She's like, there is I, a like, beach. I travel to go to the beach. Like, okay. I travel to go to the beach, yeah. Wow. So, I mean, you know, when I when I look look, look at Oh, the, yeah, there is Wilmington Beach. Uh, <laughs> there is Wilmington Beach. Like, I forgot. Like they, do, they, they, know, they do have that. They do. <laughs> North Carolina is where I live. It's not necessarily where I'm, like, flourishing. Okay. Like, loving life and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm just existing there right now wow. so but you mentioned your mom a lot so where was dad does dad grow raise, um in the household with you as well yeah um younger years but definitely been apart so your mom and dad not together mm -hmm. how old were you when they split mm. i can't you can't even remember it. nah my memory is kind of crazy i'm not gonna lie mm. yeah so do you have a relationship with your dad oh yeah i do Okay, sure. so he came and visit, did all of that. Yeah, no, no, me and my dad, we're cool. We're cool. Okay, that's He's good. like my biggest fan. Oh. Yeah. So, um, siblings? Oh, yeah, no, I'm the youngest of five. Five kids? Yes. How does that feel? It's great. That's a lot. I love it here. It's great. I'm the youngest, so it's like, I've been lit my whole life. You know, I've been everybody's baby, so. Oh, spoiled yeah. brat. I'm not a brat, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, how old were you when you started singing? Cause you know in the church, I'm, yeah, I guarantee no, you, you started pretty young. Um, when I was like really, really young, I was. Uh, it's. I can't give you a specific age. My mom said I think they heard like a voice in me like, four. Mm -hmm. But I was like really singing. I probably say I started maybe like, elementary, mm. middle, school. I was singing in church and just like doing covers and whatnot. Cause I didn't think I could write a song, so. I knew I wanted to be a singer, but I was like, ah, I just have to uh, get somebody to write me a song because I can't do it, I can't do it. But then all the way in 2020, I got my feelings hurt, then I wrote my first song. Mm, yeah. Tell me about that feelings hurt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was a little relationship. Mm -hmm. It wasn't even that toxic. We was just childish. And then like... Were you in love? Yeah, I was. So that I was your first time you've been in love? Because if it hurt you that bad, I mean, that must have been the first time you were really in love. I'm going to say, yeah, that was probably the first time that I could say it was real. It was real. You know, real. being younger, is just like, you think that's what it is, yeah. but then it's like... And that was infatuation. Yeah. Okay. You know, you know just being too attached, you know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I would say probably that was definitely the first and time. And you wrote about it. Yeah. Got it all. So that's therapy. That's one thing a lot of musicians always say. It's always great to write out your feelings because instead of, like, reacting in, like, a devastating way, mm -hmm. want to go slash his tires or anything right. like that, go to jail. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Just put it on a paper. Thank God I've never done anything like that. No. <laughs> so are you a person that is sings straight from your heart or do you write everything down? Um, I used to write songs from start to finish, but I haven't done that probably in a year now because mm. I record and engineer myself for the most part. So I'll go and like really kind of punch in, like freestyle the songs kind of because it's really just my emotion. So if I'm in the crib by myself, it's easy because like, I'm just saying how I feel like in the mic. So it's more so just natural rather than, you know, really curating it. I might come with a topic. Oh, what, I, what does this beat make me feel like? OK, cool. And. I'll make a song about that. That's probably the most I do, but I don't really sit and write out lyrics anymore. Why did you venture off into doing your own um, engineering and all of that? Okay, so uh, the guy I was talking about, so he uh, is an artist and he like uh, engineers and whatnot. So when I first started, he engineered my music for me. Okay. So I really made a diss song about him and he mixed it for me. <laughs> <laughs> he really did? Yes, wow. and I dropped it. Yeah, that's funny. And he knew exactly what it was, but he's like, it's hard. So I'm like, yeah. So y'all are friends then? Yeah, no, we're cool. We don't got no problems. So it you're not one is. of those that when you break up, you're like, you're in the past. I don't talk to you no more. Get away from me. I mean, with him, not really. Just because like 
we didn't break up or nothing crazy. We were really just childish. Okay. Like, arguing about dumb stuff. I want to sit in this chair. No, you can sit in that chair. No. Like, yes. And then it would be like, well, Jules, this your problem now. You think you just get everything you want and da 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 da, da. You're a control freak. Uh, over, we're talking about a chair right now, bro. Like, please. So it was really petty. How like, have was, you grown from that? I've grown a million times since then because I'm just like more of a communicator and more of a listener. Because before, I mean, I've always been the one to try to communicate, but on my end. So let me talk, 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 talk. You be quiet. Let me talk like that. So it's not really a relationship. And you don't listen. No, I was definitely not listening. I'm still working on it, but I'm doing way better now. Wow. I'm just practicing um, <laughs> being slow to speak right now is what I'm trying to practice, you know? Okay. Wow. Right. You yeah. know, I ain't getting in that, you know, but <laughs> I'm going to go to the music, man. Is My Alien, is that the first, the last song that you put out? Or? I dropped a whole project September yeah, 1st. I, I remember that. Mm -hmm. but, Galaxy Baby. My yeah. Alien is the single from the project when we dropped the video. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. It sound good. Like, like how much goes into, like, when you go into doing a project what what is the process for you um i guess with this project it was a little different because i was going to come well let me just say this like me as an artist i don't like have a specific genre i might do r&b this day pop i might rap sometimes i want to do some country i like a lot of different vibes i actually have some like rock stuff nobody heard it mm. <laughs> but i have different vibes and um so with this project, I wanted to like put all the vibes in one. So we're, it was really going to be a big album with like 18, 19 songs. But then just talking to different people, just advice I got, they were like, nah, just give them a little bit and then come with that when they're really wanting that from you, like to the point where you've gotten everybody ready. So it's like right now, it's like, okay, let's just sprinkle this here. Okay, I haven't dropped any pop music for you guys. So let me give you guys just like six pop songs. So let's do it that route. So with this, it was like, really hard because i went from 19 songs to six so that was definitely hard but i i love it though because it's like okay cool i got their attention this much and it's only six songs so they're like okay we listen to it but we want more now so it's fun you can drop more i feel like when you give less mm. like if i dropped like i'm not young boy like <laughs> if i dropped a whole long 20 song project me as an artist and a creator, I make stuff like every day. So it's like, dang, I feel like I can't drop again because I just gave them all that. So I got to wait. And it's like, no. But with this project, I feel like it's more fun because it's six songs and we shot a video to every song. So it's like, that's we're just going to drop, 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 drop. I agree with that so yeah, much, man. Mm -hmm. I, I, I tell people that when they come on this show in today's time, and Bum B said mm -hmm. that when we were talking, like, there's no reason why you shouldn't drop, you know, visuals to all of your, you know, mm -hmm. your, your songs on your project. I think that's, I mean, it's at your fingertips now, exactly. it, like never before. Why do you think people not doing that? Because not everybody's doing that. I think it's because people are setting their ways of looking at the way it used to be instead of how it is now. And a lot of times back in the days, it was budget, you know, related. And you mm -hmm. would see people come out with projects and they would, may have two videos on that project. I think yeah. people are stuck. Some people get stuck. Yeah. But really, in today's society, with all of these cameras, and you know, uh, you, there's no reason why you shouldn't have something coming out or, or on you all the time. People yeah. want to watch your life. People want to see Exactly, you. some type of content in the midst. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of I think the sound. you guys are dope, man. Like, uh, that's the, the thing about it. You know, like, to see how, I can tell the ones when they come flying in and they had the right type of people doing the right stuff around them. We see so many people come in and what we see in this today, we've seen it through the, the mm -hmm. ones who really put effort in the behind the scenes. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that was that important to you or is that something uh, somebody else put you up on? In the, like, as far as having uh, the right type of uh, um, movement, you know, as mm -hmm. far as when you move, having the right you know the, the the whether it be behind the scenes whether it be uh i want to go over here or here here and here and organize and how you move how, how is that being as a as an artist so i guess for me i always knew that's what it took like so before i actually started making music every day i would just do research like oh how to become a famous singer how to mm. do this so i'm just watching these things for years and years and years so it's like when i started everybody's looking like, oh, she's moving pretty fast. But I just feel like, I mean, I've been just ingrained in knowledge in my head, mm -hmm. but I always did know, especially in North Carolina, it's not Atlanta, it's not right. Dallas, it's not like there's a whole bunch of platforms or people here for artists are really trying to do that. So it's like, 
I'm just in my head, and especially because I really started during quarantine. I'm like, I gotta go viral on the internet. That's the only way it's gonna work. Being from where I'm from, like, so it's like only a select few people you can really tap in with. But I knew I needed it. But I'm just like, right now, I'm gonna do this until they come to me because I know it's necessary. Like, I can't do everything by myself. There's more to life than virality. I've been gone viral countless times on TikTok, and it doesn't necessarily change the situation if you don't know what you're doing. So that was the thing with me. Like, I've been popping on the app for years now, but I didn't have a team to let me know what to do with that. So it's like, oh, I went viral, yay, me. Mm -hmm. Reposted on my Instagram story, and that's the end of that, end of the conversation. Rather than, okay, cool, Jules, come perform that song here, do this, or do this, collab with this person, reach out to them, or I can make this move for you, blah, blah, blah. So it's completely different now, and I think, as an artist in general, I think it's really ignorant when an artist is like, I can do everything by myself. Like, because I, I used to be like that. Like, I got it. I got it. I got Especially it. Especially in this generation where mm-hmm. everything is so on hand right there yeah. for you to do everything exactly. by yourself. Exactly. But at the end of the day, it's just always a bigger picture. And so as like my team started to grow, it's like, wow, I never knew I needed that. But now that it's here, it's like, oh, my gosh, I definitely do. So it's <laughs> like, I don't know. So it's definitely important. What video or what, um, yeah, what video that went viral that um, brought you the most attention where you were able to move from just being that viral person mm-hmm. to that next level? Okay. So I think it was just. No, go ahead. I'm thinking the remix, that remix when I seen, it got a lot of buzz. Yeah, it went crazy. Yeah. But it wasn't that one. That, that wasn't the first time. Okay. Uh, Cause that was like, that was this year, uh, like a few months ago. Cause I remixed Tusi mm-hmm. favorite song yeah. and that went crazy. Correct. Like it went super crazy. Like on all social medias, on YouTube, everywhere. It, yeah, it went crazy. So I was just always the girl to do. Cause on TikTok, it's popular to do open verse challenges. Mm-hmm. So someone will post their hook and then they'll leave the beat blank. So mm-hmm. I was hopping on a whole bunch of people's songs. So the first one of the first ones I dated, it went super viral on there, and. Um, Everybody's in my comments like, oh, y'all need to do a song and blah, blah, blah. Not knowing it's like, that girl's not going to do that, guys. Like, I just, it was by chance. Like, <laughs> she's working with her team. They're going to make the right move for her career. Like, right, right now, right. but it was fire, though. So I'm like, that's exciting, but I didn't really know how to move with that. And it was just like over and over again. Okay, I'm hopping on this open verse challenge. Oh, I'm remixing this. I'm singing this because I feel like I like to do remixes. It's really fun because I want to show you know, people that I really can hop on all these different flows. That you're very flexible. Yeah, you, you no, and it's it's fun to me. It's like a different type of challenge mm-hmm. rather than just being in my own box by myself. And it's like collabing with the artist without having to really do it. Mm-hmm. You can still get that same move, that same motion, and get the same uh, out of it. But which one took you to that next step, though? Uh, it's just like the thing is with me and what I tell everybody about like the internet in general, sometimes it'll be that one post, but for the most part, it's just like things collectively adding together to really mm-hmm. shape you. And it's like, oh, because people who've been with me kind of day one, they're like, y'all weren't here when she did this. Right. Well, she did that too. Right. She did this. Oh my gosh, George, you did all this. And I'm just sitting back like, dang, I've remixed so many songs at this point. So I say like, I can't say it was that one that took okay. me there. I will say favorite song, definitely yeah. like, turn me all the way up though yeah. hmm. that remix yeah. and you know what's crazy like i wasn't even going to remix that like i really wasn't i love tusi's music and whatnot but i didn't like the key the song was in okay. that's really what it was for me and i was like it's a remix i'm not about to do the work to get someone to edit the beat for me and all that but i was like you know what forget it i'm gonna just hop on the song and so um i did that and initially instagram show love on tiktok they're like your voice is too high for this beat. Like, uh uh-uh, your voice is too high. And they were like confusing, like the pitch of my voice in auto-tune. They're like, it's too much Mm -hmm. auto-tune or something like, and I'm like, guys, like, it's my voice. So I always come on there like, oh my gosh, they said it's auto-tune, but I'm gonna sing live. I'm not in my feelings, but you're giving the opportunity to flex. So I'm like, okay, I'm about to sing live real quick. So I dropped that. And so I think why it really went crazy is because it was the love hate. Mm -hmm. And the song was what, almost number one. So it was like, everybody's talking about favorite song. And then I made my thing and I posted a woman's version, female version. So people are like, oh, she did the, this is the official (laughs) remix. And I'm like, "Ah, that's just what I titled it. It (laughs) seems like the official remix because he has a verse on the first of that, right? Mm -hmm. And his verse on the first of that, and then you come on the end, make it seem like that. Exactly, so it's just the way you move with it. It's like on my YouTube right now, well on TikTok, 
that thing got over over probably over 25 million views mm-hmm. on just on TikTok on YouTube it definitely it's like 4 million it's 5 million 5 million mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> okay okay I ain't know I, think it's I, mean, I just I, I, I had the research <laughs> so I'm looking to see what which one was your biggest like yeah, you know no, that and one that really one there crazy. was the one that stood out to me right um, yeah. I also like uh, was it uh, worst performance what, what, that live performance the worst yeah. for me live yeah, performance yeah, the so worst that was for like me my that my live that yeah. and that white and that band how did y'all even put that together my team that was his idea they hell well who's your team Shit, they, they, that's the one right there but yeah, you to hold on to him no I am <laughs> <laughs> for sure for sure no that was definitely uh, their idea so really? you're not a yeah. diva like when your team come to you and say hey this Let's is what this you so that. because that's how a lot of people end their career when they're such a diva and hard to work with you know See, what the I thing mean? is with me I feel like I'm not hard to work with but I do question things not because I don't trust you I just like since I've been so hands on by myself, I don't want to know what we're doing. So right. I can add to it or I'm doing it the right way. Like, I don't want someone to come with this lovely idea and then I'm just like, okay. And then I just do it my way. No. So I just want to make it make sense. So that's why I ask a lot of questions to make sure I'm going the right route. Yeah. I, I, in that live performance, I, I hate rappers. That, that one right that? there. Yeah, because you was mentioning names. I love when names mm-hmm. being mentioned, you know. you was, But it wasn't in a bad way. It was actually, it was real appealing. It was, it was pretty much the thing to where people... I know when they look at it, they like the way that the rhyme scheme was going with it. So, like, how did you even come up with that? What made you do it? You know, it's funny. So, I made the song. Okay, so, like, I mean, I, mean, I know I can do some rap songs. But, um, so, I was talking to somebody on the label with me and the CEO. And I'm like, y'all, I'm a rapper. I'm just joking. Like, I'm a rapper. Because she's a rapper. The girl I was talking to, she was a rapper. Okay. And so I'm like, y'all, I'm a rapper. I do this, I do that. And they're all like, Joy, shut up. You're a singer. Ah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you soft suburban girl. Like, that <laughs> energy. And I'm like, no, I'm a rapper. So I was like, you know what? I'm about to make a rap song, and I'm going to call it I Hate Rappers. Since y'all like... But then when I got into it, like I said, I just kind of punched in and freestyle. I was like, okay, if I'm mentioning rappers in the title, let's say this. But I'm not dissing nobody. But no. I want to use this to further the narrative. And so the song is basically like me you know this and I guess my ex um, or somebody I was involved with who's a rapper and I'm just like you're fake so that's why I go into lines like you're broke but you listen to Roddy Rich like you like saying stuff like that just like that was my slime like he gonna I did drop I did write that song before all that really yeah, I, I heard that at the I first that song of it I heard that at the I first still of said it. I'm still 21 like I'm polo so that's how you know I did because I'm not 21 anymore you said I'm gonna finesse you two times to get even <laughs> yeah I'm gonna finesse you like, two times to get even <laughs> I, I want to hear a little bit of it uh, well, see, that's more rap I don't want that ain't what I want I want to hear both Really? I'm yeah, but every vibe. Really? You, you th- yeah, because you want to show the versatility. I, you know, it just, I don't know if it's going to take away from it. For I go back and listen to the original version okay, where she fine. got that. Mm-hmm. No, but the live is different because you got the instruments, and I thought that no, was. No, the like, live is completely different than the real yeah. song. How is it like doing a live versus doing the real song? Like when you hear it, which one you kind of gravitate to? I know the live one probably more fun. Uh, see, the thing is with me, I'm really shy and I'm an overthinker. So when I'm in the crib and I'm making a song by myself, I'm top tier jewels because I'm it's just me here and my dog and my cat. So it's just me and I'm in the crib. So it's like I can do this over and over again a million times. But then when I'm with people, I'm you know getting out of that. But when I'm with people, it's like, uh, oh, is this right? Is this right? And they're like, yo, Jules, it's your song. You can perform mm-hmm. your song any way you want with the band. You do realize that you can control the band. But I'm just like, I don't know, I don't know. You just want to hear opinions. I don't, but the thing is, it's like, it's not, I'm not opposed to it, and that's not what I'm really looking for, right. but it's just like, me, I'm just like, is this right? It's like I'm asking myself a question, but then there's everybody else here. I'd rather ask oh, myself a question. speaking it out loud. Yeah, I'd rather you ask myself it. a question at the crib by myself. Okay, go like, ahead and give a little bit of the, of the, of the uh, I hate rappers. Ain't no beat. That's ugly. See what I'm saying? That's what yeah, I like, said. That's right? not no beat because it's, like, it's I, like I was right then. Yeah, no, no I beat. Was right. I rappers. Okay, like, I didn't say anything. Okay, I know I was right because I, I was like, <laughs> that ain't the song. I, there, out of all of those, that one song probably would be the only one that where you wouldn't do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Without the, beat. I would do that like with the beat. Correct. Yeah, with okay. the beat yeah. for sure. I gotta ask you because when I was looking you up, I have not yet seen you in anything 
playing color. <laughs> Where did you get your style from? And did you always have that style ever since you were a kid? Were you always like different? See, yeah. So actually, before I started singing, I wanted to be a fashion designer. Oh, really? So I was doing like a lot of sketches and sketchbooks. How um, old were you at that time? I was young, like definitely. I was singing, like I guess at home, but I wasn't really tapping into it. But I was probably, it was definitely like elementary, oh, middle. Okay. Yeah, no, I was young um, and just doing a lot of sketching. Were you books. good at sketching? Yeah, no, I did. I still like to draw now. Okay. I do. If you um, get out, you can get out. You I'm like not like crazy. I'm not, no, <laughs> not going to say I'm not like crazy like with it, artist. but I enjoy it. I okay. definitely enjoy it. Um, so you were always, so you always had different hairstyles, different. See, looks. like, yeah, no, different looks for sure. When I was younger, my mom wasn't really letting me dye my hair like that. I started to, I think in middle school, I dyed my hair blonde. And what I, did she say? No, nah, like, she was with it. Okay. But it was just like, at this point, let's just do it, Jules. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, come on. But it's like, at the same time, it was like, my hair was getting fried. And because I'm talking about my natural hair, I'm dying it blonde. Ooh, yeah, my hair are you not getting... taking care of it? No, I don't know what I'm doing. I mean, I'm <laughs> young, like, so I don't know what I was doing back then. But then when I went to high school, and you know, this when the natural hair thing got super mm. popping, I'm like, no, I'm about to be a natural hair girly. I'm about to big chop it and then grow it out. So I was definitely like, oh, I don't like weave like wigs. It. I'm not with that. I want to like do the curls. Uh -huh. So I was definitely on that for a minute, just have my hair out, and then I'm like. Oh no, dying it is crazy because this. But then I went to college because I always wanted my hair to be red. But then, so when I went to college, I was like, you know what? I woke up one day and just dyed it red. And in my head, I dyed it red with like a box color. Uh, it worked though. I'm not. The first time it was burgundy. <laughs> the first time it was burgundy. But I was then like, it fades. No, that's the thing. Like I thought it was gonna work, but no. So you definitely have to lift your hair mm -hmm. for it to get this bright. It yeah. has to be lifted. Lifted blonde so, and then yeah. So I tried burgundy first. It was like cute, but it wasn't red. I'm mm -hmm. like, this is still kind of regular to me. Right. Like I could have just stayed black for this. But then I went and bought a different box color. And this one said it was gonna dye your hair blonde. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's put that one in my head and then put the red on top. So that's what I was doing at first. Cause in my head, I'm like, this is better than bleach. Like girl, bye. It's still, it's still bleach. It's still gonna be <laughs> Cause I'm still putting that little lightning packet uh -huh. in there. I'm like, it's still the same And thing. some of these boxes say that it's like no harmonia or nothing like that, oh, but it does. Cause it's, it's, it lifts. Is. Anything that lifts, it has bleach. It has to. So I was definitely thinking I'm doing the healthier route right. by doing that. But even in general though, with natural hair, if you take care of it, you can dye your hair. Yeah. Moisturizer. And yeah. Stuff moisturizer. Like that. And right. you're not like, you know, overdoing it with the heat and all that. Yeah. So, so the first time you did the red, red, what was the response with everybody around you? It was like, it's so bright. That's so bright. But they liked it. They liked it. I've always been like a little different, a little weird. So it wasn't like shocking. It was just mm -hmm. like, okay, <laughs> here we go. Jules doing something else. But it's like, um, when I did that and then over time, I'm like, hmm. I really could have just put on a wig. I could have done that. <laughs> but I'm like, then I got into like faux locks and whatnot. And me, I was uh -huh. so picky. No, I need my roots to be red too. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'm dying my whole head red just, just to put <laughs> Like, it's just crazy. Like, it's ridiculous. But, you know, red really became my identity for so long that red became my black. Mm. Like, it really became regular. And you got tired of it. Not even like tired. It really became my black. So if I switch it up, let me add something to my red. Yeah. Like the red is fire. It's always going to be fire, but I was just like telling my mom. Because you do so half crazy. and half. You do the mm -hmm. color at the bottom. You do. Yeah, I've been switching. I love it the up. Harley Quinn because that was yes. like totally different. Everybody used to call me Harley Quinn because I had one black eyebrow, one red eyebrow. Right. Yeah. It's super dope. Wow. I just, um, when it come down to North Carolina, the baby. Mm -hmm. Like, like, how is, I mean, that's when you think of the, the those parts, that's who you think of. Like, how, how is he when it comes to the music for his, uh, do you love his music or? Yeah, I know. I was the baby's like biggest fan at one point, like defending him through everything. Oh, he went Everybody, through a lot now. He Don't did get go it through twisted. a lot. And it was so crazy. It was funny, like back then, because people used to always send it to my DM when something else happened. So what about this, Jules? <laughs> what about this, Jules? Oh, and I'm you, like, you really going hard for yeah, him. I was going right. hard. I used to post him every day on my story. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, is he is is it um like who else down there in in, in them parts that that you can think for? Is it just the baby or I, the baby's the biggest? I know he's the biggest, sure. but who's who? Any other artists up and up and coming or up and coming? Yeah, nobody else. <laughs> uh, just I you and the baby. 
There's people Damn. up and coming. You hear that? There's yeah, definitely yeah. people up and coming. <laughs> but like <laughs> there, no, there's people up and coming, but you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, I, I guess creating that lane, like how do like when you first got into it, when when was the first time you seen like this this like make you seen yourself doing this for the rest of your life and making money and making a living out of doing it? Really when I made my first song. So when I made my first song, I like, okay, cool. I knew I was going to drop it and whatnot, but I knew why I made the song because I'm in my feelings. And um, But I sent it to my older brother, and he's just like, whoa, Jules, this is actually pretty good. Like, this wow. is really good. For this to be your first song, this is pretty good. If you want to take it serious, I'll, I'm going to back you, and I'm going to help you. I'll stand in as your manager until we can find something. Because he's just a businessman. He doesn't really know the music side, but he does business. Like, he went to Harvard Business School. Wow. So he's That's just dope. like, I got some connects we can try to make something work and figure something out. And I'm like an influencer at the time because I was doing like the TikTok thing. Um, so he know you grind like mm -hmm. hard. Okay. Yeah. So I was doing the TikTok thing. So he was like, I'll stand in as like your business manager until you find like a music situation, someone who knows what they're doing in the sense of that. So. Wow. How did he do? No, he's still, we still rocking. No, he's definitely like on it. Cause me, I want to be a creative, like, Obviously, I understand what's going on in paperwork and all these things, but it's just kind of like, bruh, let me record. Mm -hmm. Like, let me record. Let me shoot this content. Let me do this, my hair, my makeup, all that. All the fun uh, stuff. The fun <laughs> stuff. So it's like, you need a team, but I can trust him, though. Right. Like, my blood brother, he's like second dad. That's Like, good. he's 10 years older than me. That's so good. So I've always been, like, his baby, for real. Mm -hmm. So it was just like, it made sense, and it was like something I can trust and he's real enough to be like, okay, let's do this until you do find a situation. And I'm gonna still always be there for you, especially on the business side mm -hmm. to make sure you're, you know. Wow. That's why I always tell line. people, um, it's very important, especially in today's society for artists to know more about the business. Cause mm -hmm. back then artists was just mainly, I just want to be an artist. I just want to rap or sing or whatever. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do it. That's how a lot of people got screwed. Exactly. So now everything is out there. Information is so widely available that there's no excuse why you don't know how to do everything that you're mm -hmm. supposed to know. So it's like you said earlier, they said you research everything on how to become a, a star. Yeah. What is the thing, the one thing that you researched that you found to not be true that's everywhere out there? Or was everything right? I will say like, for the most part, the things are right, but they're very vague. So someone's going to say on every video you see, if someone, if you type in how to become a famous singer or a famous rapper, they're going to be like consistency, consistency. Obviously, mm -hmm. duh, you got to be consistent, but they're not saying how. So you can be consistently doing the wrong thing. Mm. Instead of, I seen this one video and he was actually talking more so like influencing like a TikTok because I research everything I'm doing. And he was saying, yes, be consistent. But if you see this is not changing, then do something else. Not saying stop, but add something to it or stop doing this and mimic success, but your way. So if you see, okay, Beyonce is Beyonce, but Beyonce is still running on the treadmill, like still working out, still has a vocal coach, still does all these things. So why do you feel like you don't need to be doing that? Mm. Like mimic somebody in a position you would love to be in. Got it. I totally and agree. I not totally necessarily agree. like mimic, but your way. Don't your just way. sit there and copy and paste because right. now we don't need you. Exactly. That's what I always tell people: like, be yourself. Like, why that. would you want to be little the baby? We already have the baby, and it's going to be super clear because the baby is so the baby. So it's like, that's a, you're. It's weird, and it's kind of just like, okay, you did your one song, but you're. It's, yeah. on, it's not going too much farther than that because we don't need it. totally different than a lot of people you hear, period. So I don't think you have to worry about yeah. mimicking anyone. Mm -hmm. You know, your your style is quite unique. Thank you. All. You know what I mean? When you listen at it, it's like, like something that you hear all the time. I know you want to get something. That's what I was going to ask. No, I was going to ask about that because I was going to say, how many people actually hear you sing and be like, where are you from? Are you from the Caribbean? Are you from New Orleans? Or are you from... Nobody can hear you sing and think that, oh, she's from North Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, no one really says that. It's so weird, like, how you talk mm -hmm. compared to how you sing is like... No, literally everyone says that. Yeah, I don't know, like, no one really pinpoints me, and that's what I kind of like. It's kind of like, because I know me, I know I'm scattered, so if the listeners are scattered too, it's like, well, we're <laughs> on the same page. We're on the same page. And that's but, your natural singing voice? Or do you did you 
train yourself to sing like that? It's like, I, okay, so when I first started making music, you can, the songs are still out. Mm -hmm. Those songs are, I didn't really know how to sing on the mic. I was singing in church, so I knew how to sing, but on the mic it was different. And it was kind of like, I'm trying to get these lyrics off, make sure my lyrics are clear. So they sounded like I was more so talking, in my opinion. I'm not really doing any inflections in my voice. I'm not putting an emotion into it. So it was like, it was cool, but it wasn't like, I don't know. I have people who say, I still listen to your first song and I'm like, cringy, ew, stop. <laughs> like, um, but I feel like over time, I definitely like developed my voice. It's not something that I like forced Mm -hmm. but it became more consistent and now I kind of really love the sound the and accent. it's my yeah like and it's my sound so so give me a little bit of it live if you don't mind um any song any song okay. and turn straight so we can get you good on that cameras too mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. any song okay so probably like my biggest song right now is love how I love you okay, and the video is out right now so I'm gonna sing the hook for you guys and it goes like I should have loved myself before I fell in love with you. I never knew my worth could never get enough of you. You didn't love me, you just love how I was loving you. You never loved me, you just love how I was loving you. Man, Ooh, nice. that's so different. Totally I love different. it. Thank love you. it, man. It's so funny because I've only heard, you're the third person I've ever heard in my entire life that speaks like totally different and sings I remember a girl in church, she's Jamaican, mm -hmm. but she, every time she sings, she sounds like a country singer. Really? I promise I you, I've never been to the States, never been around anybody <laughs> who speaks country or anything, but she sings like a country singer. And then we have another young lady, Terry Cherry. I mean, she, Terry Cherry. she country, mm -hmm. but when she sings, I mean, like, she sounds like she's from New Orleans or the Caribbean. It's so weird the way how she sings. Everybody's looking at her like, huh? It's a so weird, and then now you, oh, but it's lovely. I love Thank your voice. You. Dope Thank voice, you. man. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive, any genre. We do this every mm -hmm. show. <laughs> I can't give top three of all top time. Three. Top three, your top three. I'm not yeah, talking about your top three. It's just like, like who I, you, who's on your mind. It can change, but it does change every week. Right. Like, I mean, I definitely have my favorites, so I can't. Just give me three anything. artists that you rock out with, then, if you want to do it that way. I love Rihanna. Mm -hmm. That's your number one. Yeah. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why when I hear you sing like certain songs, you remind me of her. I love Rihanna. Yeah. That's the only time when if someone ever compared me to somebody or sang something like that, I'm like, I know I don't sound like her. So it's like, but that's the only time I'm like, oh, I'm not offended by that. Mm -hmm. I'm not offended. It's not that I'm offended any other time, but it's like, no, I sound like me. Right. But I just love her so much. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a resemblance. Yeah. There is a resemblance. I think she just has a unique tone. Right. Yeah. So, like, when people hear my voice, they'll just be like, oh, that's unique. Mm -hmm. So then they're going to connect it to someone else with a unique tone. With a unique tone. Yeah. And who else? Um, I love Chris Brown. Mm-hmm. Chris <laughs> Brown. Rihanna and Chris Brown. Yeah. Love okay. Them. And that's why this is hard to say, because it's like, I'm so scattered. I love Adele. Okay. So is yeah. she number three? That's just too many artists no, to even do that. Not, today, everybody always have that. It's now today, we can do that. Okay. Because most oh. people always go with the Michael Jackson, the Tupac, the Prince. Yeah, see, that's why I'm the like, Prince. of course I wanted to say Michael Jackson so bad. But it's yeah. just like, you only gave me three. Wow. <laughs> Did a great job. Top three was nice, man. Top three artists of all time. Man. And that's our of first time. That is so dramatic. And that's our first Jewel. Rihanna, though. Time. That's our first Rihanna that we yeah, got. But that's, that's so dramatic. That, that was it right there. Race. All, all time, time, That's baby. so dramatic. All that's time. Dramatic. Dead or alive, so you know it's a huge... It's huge. That's a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But she gave us hers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> for, for today. For, for today, today. For today. No, but Rihanna is definitely always... Rihanna and Chris Brown are like... Definitely. Man. So, I mean, who would you like to work with if you could pick anybody? Rihanna and Chris Brown. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, tons of people though. I want to do some country stuff. I like uh, Morgan Wallen. Mm. Okay. Yeah, he's fire. Uh, Sam Hunt is fire. Justin Bieber, definitely would work with him. I was mm. a believer like when I was younger. Biggest fan, yes. Um, wow. And why, sorry, why haven't you let out The Rock? You say you did a little bit of rock music, yeah, but you haven't let it out. I feel like I'm, 
I have so much music. That's the thing. It's just so much. So I just feel like it's a time and place. She better know what she's doing. What she's How do you decide which one to put out? Them. And you know me, since I'm so scatterbrained, that's why I like to have a team. Because me, I make so much stuff, but I'm in love with all of it. So I'm not really tripping. I'm not like, oh, no, I don't want to drop that. Because I'm like, just because it's unreleased doesn't mean it's never coming. Mm-hmm. So it's just like. Wow. You know. Man, um, how can people get a hold of you? We're about to, we about to shut it down. Mm-hmm. Huh? Uh, yeah, uh, how can people get a hold of if they trying to reach out, trying to book, whatever, you know, just want to find you? Um, my Instagram and TikTok is Jules, J E W dot E L S, but it's Jules, not Jewels. Okay. And my YouTube is Official Jewels Music. Um, but yeah, no, I have like links for booking and numbers, emails, all that. Wow. All my bios, my socials. Man. Who is the person that you've worked with so far that you just um, like enjoyed working with that you've never even thought that that would have even happened? You know, I'm going to say like uh, probably the baby. Like I said, it was my, I was his biggest fan and then he directed Love How I Love You. So mm-hmm. it was just different because he's super creative and out there. And I'm super creative, but I'm shy. So it was like different, like just the whole process of shooting the video and it's like, I'm looking at it as like, oh, you got one time. Like, mm-hmm. you got to stop that shy stuff today and just do it. Just yeah. do it. And like, so it was just like really fun, you know, and just like made me open my mind a little bit more. Tell me what it was like, like meeting him for the first time. Oh, I was nervous. Scared. Definitely shy. Because like I said, I was obsessed. So it was like, ah. But then after I was like, dang, like after I've been around him so much, I was like, now it's kind of weird. Like, that you were very invasive <laughs> to this human. Like, when you, uh-huh. like, so now I've met, like, a lot of people I was fans of. It's like, they're humans, Jules. You can admire them for their work. Exactly. But, like, ew, don't be a weirdo. Like, yeah. so, nah, nah, he's definitely, um, it was different, though, than what I expected. Um, what did you expect? I didn't expect anything bad, but I just expected right. the internet personality in real life. Like, you know, the big, the big, like, rapper personality, like, oh, best rapper alive like that energy but he's like chill mm. cool dude so that's the one thing i see a lot of people do um they have like these two different personalities mm-hmm. and like for me i'm who i am all the time no matter mm-hmm. what so i'm like and some artists say they have to do it they have to be a different person when you go on stage to turn up and when they're at home they really just chill they they, they don't even want to go to a club they don't want to hang out they just do it for work because you do it so much mm-hmm. so i see a lot of artists like that yeah. Is that how you are too? And that's what I'm trying to become, uh, just because it is putting on a show. So it's like you're going out there being an actor. Mm-hmm. So if I think about it like that, if I have like a 15 minute set, like I'm performing tonight in Dallas. Where? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Summer Walker's gonna be somewhere tonight, and I'm opening <laughs> for her. Yeah. So it's just like I look at it as okay, cool. Well, let me get my 15 minutes in, but this is your, I'm not from here. So this is first impressions mm-hmm. for tons of people in here. So it's like, you got to go out there. I know I'm shy, but if I come up there like this, it's just kind of like, yeah, where is something? You got to find like, the in-between. Where is you got to find the in-between and right. definitely give them a you show. You can't be too like boastful and like, you know. Yeah, like, no, it's it. just like, but me, what I found the strength of my performing is when I go out there with the intentions to have fun, mm-hmm. not the intentions to be the goat or better than her, better than this person. Just go out there and have fun and it translates way better to the crowd. And I already have super relatable music, so it's not too hard, but like I said, I'm an overthinker. Will this be your first time meeting Summer Walker? Yeah. Okay, Is there? do you think that you would like to work with her maybe oh, one definitely. day? Definitely. The first song I ever made, actually in the midst of that, I was listening to Over It every day. Mm. <laughs> like, every day that was like my album, my album, and then the first song, you know, back then I didn't know too much about music, so I'm like on YouTube, like the tight beats. It was a Summer Walker tight beat, mm. the first song I ever made, so wow. like, for sure. Man, thank you so much for coming on the yes. show, man. Um, we love you and we appreciate you for stopping through. And if thank you're ever you back in Dallas, me. you got to come back on Boss Talk 101, where the boss Definitely is talk will. for show. Yes. Man, um, you got anything else? No, that's it. Did you it. get a, where, everything out of it that you needed? Yes, sir. Man, hold up, man. Hey, man. Listen, man, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel, man. It's we was here, man. We had a good time with Jules mm-hmm. today, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talk. And we out.